It's great to be here. It is uh, fun. Hey, uh, dear participants of the One Young World Summit, the founder of CMI, Marti Ahtisaari, always insisted in visiting schools while he traveled around the world. At one of his school visits, I think it was in his native Finland, a student asked him, that, do you have anything to teach us? Marti smiled and said, I am here to learn from you. And I, this is the reason I am here today, uh, to learn from you. And th this is why I think uh, Marti was so successful in promoting peace uh, in four continents and received his Nobel Prize in 2008. Marti believed that we need to include everyone in peace processes, not just the elderly men, but also women, young people, people with disabilities and minorities. This principle of inclusivity still guides the work of CMI, Marti Ahtisaari Peace Foundation, the peace mediation organization Marti founded some 20 years ago. Today, as a CEO, I have the honor of making sure that that, that legacy lives on in our work every day in more than 20 projects that we are doing. When CMI was founded, the peace negotiations were conducted by senior white men sitting around a large table, often behind closed doors. Between 1992 and 2019, only 6% of the mediators and 13% of negotiators in major peace processes were women. Since that, we have made some headway, and not all participants of negotiations are graying men like me. There is an acknowledgement that the peacemaking is not privilege of a few. We know from research that inclusive peace agreements do last longer. It is also a right thing to do. The UN Security Council has, in landmark resolution uh, 1325 and uh, 2250, laid out that we have an obligation to promote inclusive peacemaking. One of Marty's principles was always to listen to young people. Not only listen, but to respect and take their views and aspirations into account. Unfortunately, the potential of youth still remains untapped in, in peacemaking. Uh, how many of you have heard about Boko Haram and Chibok girls? Raise your hands. Uh, you know about that. CMI has worked in many years in Lake Chad Basin in West Africa, the precise region where those uh, girls were kidnapped. The four governments of the Lake Chad Basin have platforms where they address regional security issues, such as Boko Haram crisis. It is probably not a surprise to you that those platforms tend to consist mostly of elderly men. At the same time, almost 70% of the people in the Lake Chad Basin are younger than 25 years. There is a huge missed opportunity here. Recognizing this, CMI has been working together with the youth network in the Lake Chad Basin for several years. Young men and women are among the most affected by violence and abuse by Boko Haram. The youth also suffer from social stigmatization and suspicion of being affiliated with the insurgents. This can hinder youth's prospects in engaging in local peacemaking or getting a, a job. We want youth to contribute to regional stabilization efforts. Our aim is to support youth with the knowledge and skills they need to be active agents of peace in their communities. This is what Indira, a young woman uh, from the youth network in Cameroon said, and I quote, we must ensure that each group that at the table would talk about their own situation. Only women can talk about the situation of women, and only young people can best present the situation of youth. Don't let men decide for women, and don't let elders speak for young people. Indira is right. Peace building needs young people. My organization, CMI, supports peace, process, uh, peace mediation processes globally in Africa and the Middle East and Europe and in Asia. Our work often involves facilitating multi-generational peace processes, including youth. 
We want those in power to recognize and respect the worldview of young people. We do this because we know that this is the way to sustainable peace. In many conflict-affected countries, the percentage of people under 18 years is over 60%. In essence, we are talking about political change towards more inclusive, more just societies. Esteemed young leaders, even if the challenges of peace and war remain the same, the world you live in is in some ways fundamentally different than the world of previous generations. Unlike me, you grew up in a digital world. I, I vividly remember my first own computer. It was Spectrum ZX. Highly, you have not heard about it as Amigas became much more popular, so popular that they have actually been immortalized in Stranger Things lately. That my nerdy choice of computer is not the point here, but the fact that I do remember that so well. I bet yet that you do not remember the first digital equipment you laid your hands on. I remember, but you grew up with them. That's the difference of our generations. Over two-thirds of Internet users are Millennials and Generation Z. Millennials and Gen Z are the first generations of digital natives. You have learned to use the, uh, use the online space in innovative ways. You know how to connect with people across the globe and mobilize them towards a common goal. Just as our everyday lives happen online, so does conflict and war. Large-scale uh, cyber attacks and effective information campaigns are a significant part of modern warfare. The use of social media and digital technology play an increasingly, increasingly, increasingly critical part of any conflict that is unfolding right now. The problem here is that, the key problem here is that the forces of war and conflict have been much more effective in harnessing the new digital tech tools than the forces of peace. And that's why we peacemakers desperately need your help. The fact is that we, the forces of peace, we need to up our digital game. And to be frank, I, I strongly doubt that we can do that without you, young leaders. This is ask for help, engagement in a digital world. The first step, to think, uh, first step is to think how you engage people digitally, you, in everyday life. We cho all choose every day what kind of language we use and what kind of content we share. You may choose to be a peace builder or a warmonger. Esteemed young leaders, we know that education and employment are key factors in empowering young people around the globe. I salute you young leaders who have been fighting for these rights as well as climate action and more just societies. Many of you have been in touch with the decision makers in your societies. Unfortunately, your voices have not always been heard. However, the new digital world is giving you tools to be heard and to make a difference. The Me Too campaign showed the power of peer-to-peer -peer support and turntables. There is a lot of potential also in conflict-affected settings for the youth to make the voices heard. Youth-led online campaigns ex expressing needs, worries, and perceptions of people are crucial. Such campaigns can receive a great deal of attention and can also sh shape peace processes. In Afghanistan, quite recently, especially young women used the hashtag MyRedLine to raise their voice, particularly their red lines during the peace talks. And it was a very effective campaign. As I urge you to use your skills, knowledge, and interests, and be an active agent yourself. Online and offline worlds are now filled with opportunities for you to become a peacemaker. I also encourage you to support other young people around you. That's a crucial point. Be bold and make your voice heard. Dear friends, the contributions of young leaders of your generation to the development of societies are profound not only in times of peace, but also in times of conflict. We live in times where climate change and increasing number of conflicts cloud our future. 
the daily news of large armed conflicts in Ukraine, Ethiopia, Myanmar, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria can go on, indicate that the growing trend to resolve, there is a growing trend to resolve conflicts by arms. For our future, for your future, we have to stop this global resurgence of war. We have to turn the tide that conflicts are not resolved by weapons, but by mediation or discussion. If we cannot do that, our attempts to address the climate change will be seriously hampered. With this, I'm back to where I started. I am here to listen to you, young leaders. What are, what are you to do to promote peace? How are you going to promote peace? Young leaders, your voice, your point of view, and your presence are crucial to prevent and resolve conflict. Peace.